<laughs> no, okay. So there's a there's a thing that I love that certain guitar players do. You hear it with like prog guys that have some kind of fusion background. You hear it with fusion guys. You hear a lot with drummers. I feel like it's mainly a drummer thing that guitar players have just picked up, and that is using interesting phrasing or like groupings i'm specifically thinking about odd groupings so like groups of five you're outlining groups of five in your improv or like in a solo and it's something that we both do quite a bit i think it's <laughs> i've had people point it out to me and they're like oh yeah i can immediately tell that you like play prog or something because you're doing like outlines of fives in a solo or something and it's not something that other people would just think to do maybe which is not fair to other genres because a lot of people do it. I don't know about you, but I feel like maybe you're going to an- have the same answer as me. But I was playing hemiolas or, or however you want to call the act of playing a grouping that doesn't line up with the subdivision uh, before I was playing a lot of prog. Like I, I was doing like as soon as I learned the pentatonic shape, I was trying to put groups of threes and 16th notes and groups of fours and triplets and groups of fives. And like as soon as I could do like this thing, I was trying to go, you know. Right. Right. And doing that and just like independent from the grid. And then you get to like, you know. But you were like, when you started playing solos, you were consciously like, oh, I want to play groups of threes. Yeah. Really? I mean, I I definitely, my my teacher definitely told me about him. He definitely like told me about the idea of having a grouping that didn't line up to the grid. We didn't like go in depth about like polyrhythm, but he just told me that that was a thing. So I was like practicing it, you know? Right. Right. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Stuff like that, you know, pretty rudimentary, like pentatonic. Or the idea of like playing your scale. And then not accenting the string change, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So the one is happening at a different place in the figure every time. So separating, so it wasn't actually hemiolas. It was the idea of separating how you're playing or what you're playing from the grid. That idea was fairly early for me. It was not for me, for sure. I was listening to a lot of like more rock and blues stuff, which they have it in there, but it was not something that I was consciously thinking about. I, I don't think I really started hearing, I didn't get interested in that kind of thing until I saw like the Eric Johnson fives and I was like, oh, that's cool. I didn't even know that, like to think about that. Fives were definitely a concept I picked up later, but the, the rudimentary idea of disconnecting the grid from the grouping is, is what I'm talking about. But fives were definitely hip for me until about halfway through jazz school. I didn't go to jazz school, so they're still hip to me. Real quick, though, the the fives that Eric Johnson would do a lot was like these pentatonic, like. And um, I I think he would do them as 16th notes and also as quintuplets. He, he does them all the freaking time, but. He's the man. He does them insanely fast, and they're all like this. I guess economy picking, something like that. Something like one of them is hammer on. No, no. There's a whole, it's like down, up, down, up, up. I can't do it fast. And then on the other way, it's like. There's like a thing of when you're going to the lower strings, it's two downs at the end. And when you're going to the higher strings, it's like two ups at the end or something. That's sick. I had no idea. Yep. Huh. Okay. Sick. All right. Great. I know what I'm doing tonight. So that <laughs> that idea of playing those groupings, I think think i didn't start thinking about it until i saw a breakdown of that and then from there it's just so much fun to be able to feel these groupings over a quarter note or whatever you're playing in and it gives such an interesting sound because most of the time the audience or whoever's listening is not thinking about it they're not like oh he's playing in groups of fives it just sounds like this cyclical thing that's happening now I definitely abuse that idea. The groups of fives in sixteenth notes or in six tuplets or something. I it's very something. It's something that I do quite a bit, Cause especially with the two one two thing. I have so many fives. Uh, sorry, shapes that add up to fives. Like all of these, 
all the different you know yeah what's that last one that you just did the the group it's all to two one two so the last one i did so like an e melodic minor idea where i'm going major seven root 11 5 major 7 and you can do it yeah so how how are you picking so i'm doing pick hammer pick plug hammer yeah you're grabbing that that 11 with your ring finger right I can't really see. yeah um so yeah that's that's like i abuse that one especially when i can get it on a on a five chord or something or if i have like and then the thing that's interesting that i'm trying to do more that i know you do quite a bit is mixing groupings yep which is kind of the next step right because it's it's cool to like build tension by doing the same thing over and over again right because then you can climax and go up or, or sort of come back down the scale or something but i think it's more interesting if you kind of practice some flexibility and some freedom within all these groupings really fast so if you do like groups of fives over and over again and you throw in a group of six or you throw in a group of four i find that super interesting yeah yeah right so if i if if i'm doing something like Right, mm -hmm. like, right. That's that stuff is kind of super interesting. I find that these are the coolest when they're in time, because there's a lot of wait, like if you're just trying to play as fast as you can and you're doing like random groupings, that's cool. But I think it sounds the most. It hits the hardest when it's like you're playing this in sixteenth notes or like thirty second notes. Here's a criticism of a lot of the guitar players that do this sort of stuff is that I feel like a lot of them aren't responsible for the grid that they are playing in. It's like you're saying, like, the goal is to play it in 16th or in triplets or 30 seconds or 60 uh, or six tuplets, whatever you're, you're thinking of. But then you'll get a lot of transcriptions, you know, by, like, older fusion guys that when they're ripping, they'll play a quintuplet or seven tuplet. I don't think that they intended to play a seven tuplet. No, it's just, like, free... Yeah, because I feel like meeting you and, and, and making music with you and sort of like exploring like tuplets more the past like since 2020, like actually playing quintuplets, you know, like uh, with, with my friends and all that stuff, like having gone on this journey like the past few years, when I hear those players play quintuplets and set tuplets, it's not how I think of quintuplets and set tuplets. Not at all. Like it's not locking in this in the same way. And um, so, you know, just to call a lot of those fusion guitarists out for their <laughs> shit time. The, it's a different style. It's not one like it's a different uh, style, yeah. but like, but like, but you can, but you know that they they don't have this accountability for the subdivision that they're playing in. Like they're just kind of like trying to land on the beat at the end of this phrase. And you know, I'm not a perfect man. There are moments in, in there are recordings where I've done that, and then later after the fact, you're just like, wow, like I'm garbage. Like this is what I played. <laughs> yeah, I I definitely do it too. Yeah. You, you speed up and you slow down. Like, you'll do a really fast phrase, you know, like, uh, I don't know. What was I doing the other day? Some, some stuff like that. And then you analyze it and you realize that, like, actually you did the first half slower than the second half. So you actually played a quintuplet and then, like, a fast triplet or some, some shit like that. So it's the class it's a classic situation i feel like i get annoyed though when stuff's transcribed like that and then you're trying to feel it and you're like but this person isn't feeling it like that yeah well that's the problem is it, the problem is when it comes to like playing it on paper so like you would write sorry putting it on paper you would write out a quintuplet and you're just like oh like felt <laughs> weird like rushed <laughs> rushed you know yeah. in the notation you're just like oh this guy rushed this but i don't know like it, it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day like that is what you played so the transcription is just an act of like putting what you played on paper when i play a group of five when i intend to it's because everybody's playing that quintuplet Right. Or it's because like in the space between two punches, like that tuplet sort of made sense. It, it, it's it's like, I don't know, it, it's way more uh, metronomic now than just rushing to end the phrase a specific place. This this kind of brings us to the conversation. You know, the next logical step would be to play hemiolas of even numbers, you know, threes and fours in quintuplets and set tuplets. <laughs> OK, yeah. So we're kind of getting to the, the same thing I was going to bring up that a fun exercise that I like to do 
I'm nowhere near the level where I can just do that stuff in quintuplets to switch between like, say I have a five pattern and switching between 16th notes and triplets while maintaining the five pattern. Do you mean in 16th notes or triplets, you're playing a five and then switching between the 16th and triplets? Are you saying groups of threes and fours in quintuplets? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, playing it in six, playing a, like a... Oh, in 16th notes right. or triplets. Playing, you're playing, playing 16th in 16th notes, notes, triplets, notes but you play the same the same grouping right yeah ah uh, yes that's tough because you have to like switch at the right place because it's easy to switch on the beginning of one right it's, I mean, yeah, it, it's tough because if you miss it, you're going to be offset by a 16th note on the triplet, and then you're just going to, that's just not it. It's just yeah. not going to work. Well, as as a <laughs> as a practice thing, you can just figure it out ahead of time. So, like, know that, okay, doing these fives in, tri in triplets, it's going to take three times, and then doing them 16th notes, it's going to take four times, right? So, like, if you're like... Da -da 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 I know I can switch there to, to 16th notes, right? So then that's my quarter note. Let's see if I can do this on the spot. Ah. Like that kind of thing. I mean, I would definitely want to have an actual metronome playing. A piece of advice I would have with this, though, is that, like, do it with the metronome, but then also be able to do it without the metronome, where you can push and pull, but still be able to figure out where you are. For example, if you're playing with a drummer at, like, a show, and you don't have a, you guys both don't know have a, have a metronome, being able to feel this stuff while there's push and pull, it, it's a good skill to have yeah you want to make sure that as much this is something definitely that i'm guilty of is is when you do a lot of metronome practice you do get good you get good at playing with the metronome so you have to then like do supplemental practice to make sure that you don't need the metronome to hold your hand which is its own skill that i see people are really good at and then some people are not as good at and i have some there's definitely some in you know some problems that i have here and there with like adding a beat here losing a beat there flipping the two and four that's happened to be a bit too often to say that like i didn't spend too much time with the metronome going you know like uh like really outlining like every possible division uh, yeah i think there's there's something to say about being able to play all this complicated stuff without a metronome and still feel solid yeah the the internal time it's not necessarily about internal like perfect metronomic time and it's more about, are you lost in the phrase? You know, that's what I'm saying. Like, are you lost in the phrase if you are then playing a grouping of fives in triplets? Do you, does that make yourself, does that make, do you get lost because of that? Depending on who I'm playing with, sometimes the drummer gives it to me and then I'm not lost. You know, all I need is like an end of phrase fill to know for sure that like the one is coming up, you know, sometimes. But sometimes some drummers are assholes and they're fucking with you, you know? And then you have to be responsible for yourself. <laughs> Dude, when you're doing this kind of stuff and a drummer doesn't give it to you and you're just like, oh, I don't know where I am anymore because I did the stupid fives like. <laughs> that's like, that's like, that's like what happens when I play with Daniel and Julian, man. They're like, they're like actually like trolling me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you think you're cool playing sevens? <laughs> they don't give it to me. And then they also like make an effort to not make a facial expression <laughs> if I get it right or wrong. Yeah. <laughs> just on your own it's terrible <laughs> it's terrible i hate it <laughs> but you know what like also sometimes like the uh, sometimes like that's thrown other people like for a loop like there's been times where i've like jammed with people that were like a little bit earlier on their journey you know like drummers too and then i play the fives and then they lose it so like that's always like a little bit haha gotcha yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just to leave off uh, leave off people with like an approachable way to do this sort of stuff if you sort of base it off of techniques and shapes and sort of like fill your bags like things that add up to five things that add up to three four seven whatever and then you just kind of practice those in scenarios that don't line up you will get to the you'll, you'll sort of 
you'll start playing the stuff that we're talking about. You know, another another practice tip is um, you want to get the stuff. I think it's easiest to start practicing this with subdivisions, right? So you like have your metronome at playing 16th notes or whatever subdivision you want to play in and then take away the subdivisions and leave only the quarter note and get really comfortable feeling these patterns in different groupings with just the quarter note. Because there's also the thing of where it's easy to just ignore the quarter note and just feel this like and just play along with it and it's it's not helping you yeah i completely agree with you because you want to use this whole thing the whole this entire thing that we're talking about for both of us i think was a stepping stone towards feeling polyrhythms yes absolutely so you want to put yourself in a situation where you are feeling the polyrhythm when you're playing these groupings because um it's it's one of these things that you could say you are relying on the technique to do the more complicated time thing because it's easy to play five notes in a row over and over again so because you're relying on the technique to just play that consistently you then want to with your body feel the quarter note so when you're playing groups of fives you still want to feel the quarter note with your feet and your and your and your whole body like that that is the thing that will make it so that you don't get lost in the phrase right because even though you know even though i was saying earlier like i have you know there's some issues that i'm working through with like losing beats here and there if i'm playing fives and I'm feeling the 4-4, I still know when a downbeat's happening. This stuff is sick, so I hope more people will do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's 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 definitely hip. It's And it's it's also all over the music you're listening to. I feel like a lot of, in the prog space, in the sort of instrumental space, like, it's everywhere. A lot of people that are trying to do that, you can kind of tell the difference between someone that's, like, sick and less sick, depending on how much of that stuff is in their phrases. You know, like, the interesting phrasing in time is kind of, like, very prevalent in the genre but that is something that people have trouble picking up so once you get that in your ear like you start coming up with very m more interesting phrases do you want to leave off with like a a grouping that you've been interested in or like a some kind of repeating pattern that you've had uh, a good time with since i gave like the easy stuff early on i'll do there's one hard one that i've been trying to do where it's groups of fours and fives and i've been doing it with this chord shape so it's like teka te teka teka te teka I'm trying to I'm trying to accent them. So Do you know what I'm saying? So you're you're accenting fours every fifth. I'm accenting every fifth note in the group of four. And that's just so I can like outline the quintuplet in my accent while playing like a group of four. But like a teka te teka teka te teka. So it's like constantly going down a string where the accent's happening. So it's a, the pattern in the actual song is a little bit different. That was kind of like a tough thing for me to feel because you have to internally feel the quintuplets like tack it, tack it. So that that's kind of taken me a little bit of <laughs> a little bit of time to get under my get under my ears you know like and then and then i had to try to clap it so it's like one two three four 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 one yeah like i'm like i'm like on the metro like a crazy person trying to do that like in front of people you know like trying to practice that like by myself but yeah that's that's one that's been that i've been trying to get into lately what about you i don't know that i have one that's like that i'm currently working on but one that i've been doing a lot just because it's fun uh, I think I showed it to you when you were down here, but it's just like this group of five that's like. Yeah, yeah, that, that's because you, you do a lot of those finger rolls. Yeah. Right? That's what you were yeah, doing. Yeah, so it's like pick, hammer on, hammer on, down pick, hybrid pick. But you get fucked if you have to do a position that, that isn't barring that finger right right i mean i wouldn't do it in another position or i would just do like a small part of it i wonder if i could do something really stupid with this ah <laughs> 